In this example, we're examining a gravity settling tank. Uh, these tanks are used to separate particles from a fluid stream, as shown in the picture below. So basically, you have water with particles coming in from left to right on the left-hand side. And the idea is this, as the flow goes from left to right, any particles that are in here that have a density greater than that of the fluid will settle down to the bottom. And what we want to do in this problem is figure out what is the minimum length L that we need to have to make sure that a particle located at a distance H, which is you know at the very top of the channel here, will settle out before it leaves the tank. So we want to just make sure we capture all those particles. So uh, to analyze this, what we're going to do is just calculate the drag force acting on this particle as it settles down. And to, use that drag force to figure out the time that it takes to settle. And we want to make sure that the time that it takes to settle is shorter than it the time it takes to travel the whole distance along the length of the, the channel. So let's write that down. So we want to make sure that the time to settle is less than the time to transit from left to right. Okay, so the, the transit time will just be the length of the channel divided by the velocity u. The velocity u is this velocity here. So the time it takes to go all the way across will be just L divided by u. Okay, now the time to settle is a little more complicated. We have to calculate that based on the terminal speed of the particle. So the time to settle will be the distance h, that's this height here, divided by the terminal speed of the particle just settling under the action of gravity. So I'll just write U terminal. So it's just the settling speed, which will be the terminal speed of the particle as it, as it falls under the action of gravity. So to find what that terminal speed is, what we'll do is we'll draw a free body diagram on the particle. So we, of course, have weight acting downward on it. There'll be a buoyant force acting upward and then there'll be a drag force acting upward on the particle. So when we sum forces in the vertical direction, uh, at, when it's at terminal speed, um, that sum of the forces will be equal to zero. And so we'll have weight acting downward, buoyant force acting upward, drag force acting upward. The buoyant force is just going to be the weight of the displaced fluid. So it'll be the density of the fluid times gravity times the volume of the particle. And then the drag force will be a drag coefficient acting on the particle times the um, dynamic pressure based on the terminal speed of the particle. I'll just write it as a TERM squared times the projected area of the particle, which would just be pi d squared over 4. Pi d squared over 4 is just the cross-sectional area of the particle looking at it from the front. So it's this, it's, if the diameter of the particle is d, it's this cross-sectional area here that you would see looking at it from that direction. And the, the volume, by the way, since we we're just saying that the diameter of the particle is d, the volume of the particle will be pi over 6 d cubed, since we're assuming it's a sphere. And then the drag coefficient, that, that's the part that requires quite a bit more thought. So we're going to assume that the particles are small. I'm not sure if it's stated that actually in the, in the problem statement. Let's just go ahead and quickly take a look at it. Yeah, it says actually right here, you may assume that the particle diameter is very small. So what that means is that the Reynolds number for that particle is likely to be very small, which then puts us in the Stokes flow regime. So the drag coefficient in the Stokes flow regime is 24 over the Reynolds number based on the particle's diameter. So this is a Stokes drag. And it assumes that the Reynolds number is smaller than one. So we're gonna to have to check that assumption at the very end. And the, the Reynolds number based on the particle diameter is just going to be the speed. Here it's the terminal speed because that's the speed with which the particle is dropping times the diameter of the particle divided by the kinematic viscosity of the fluid. Okay, so let's go ahead then and substitute all of these expressions here back into our, our force balance equation. 
Now, by the way, one other thing I should mention, when I wrote this force balance equation, I assumed that we were immediately at the terminal speed of the particle. In reality, it'll take some distance for the particle to reach that terminal speed, but when the particles are very small, that terminal speed is reached almost immediately. So this is a very reasonable assumption to assume that the particle hits its terminal speed almost immediately. Okay, so now let's go ahead and substitute in. So we'll have the mass time, uh, so we have zero is equal to the mass times gravity. Let's just write the mass as the density of the particle times the particle volume times gravity. So there's the weight of the particle. Buoyant force was the density of the fluid displaced by the particle. So that looks like that. So let me just make a note of these. This is the weight of the particle. This is our buoyant force. And then the drag force, we just said was the drag coefficient, which I'll write in terms of the Reynolds number, times the dynamic pressure, times the cross-sectional area. So this is our drag force. All right, so let's go ahead and start simplifying some things. First of all, you see there's a pi that cancels out in these. Um, actually, before I go too much further down that road, let me go ahead and rewrite this expression and um, expanding out the, the Reynolds number. So this will be 24 over the Reynolds number, which will just be the terminal speed times the particle diameter d divided by the kinematic viscosity. Actually, let me write this in terms of dynamic viscosity and the fluid density. So that's the dynamic viscosity of the fluid divided by the, the fluid density. Um, yeah, I have that correct, I believe. Let me clean that up just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to have to erase the whole thing because I just made a mess of it. So this will be 24 all over the Reynolds number, which will be the density of the fluid times the terminal velocity times the diameter divided by the dynamic viscosity. Okay, I think I have that right now. Times one half rho u terminal speed squared pi d squared over four. And then we can go ahead and do a little simplifying here. So this will be 12 and then divide that out and that'll make it a three. The density of the fluid here cancels with that one. This velocity will cancel with that velocity. That diameter will cancel with that diameter. So what we're left with is three times mu times the terminal speed times the diameter. And there's a pi in there as well. So that's what the drag force is for this very small spherical particle. Okay, now getting back to simplifying, we said that we could divide through by a pi, so we'll divide through by that pi. And it looks like we can also divide through by a diameter because there, there's some diameters in each of these terms, so let's do that. I can group these two, uh, these two terms together because they both have like a diameter squared now and a g and then the sixth. So let, let's go ahead and do that. This will be like a 1 over 6 now, d squared times g, density of the particle minus the density of the fluid, minus 3 mu times the terminal velocity. And then we'll go ahead and solve for the terminal speed now. So just a little bit of algebra. You can see that we can divide through by the 3. So there we are. That's the terminal speed. Let me just double check that I've done everything correctly there. I think that's all correct. So that's the terminal speed of the little bit of the little particle. And then just going back up to what we had written before, we wanted to find the settling time. So that would be this h divided by u. And we want to make sure that settling time is less than the transit time. So, so t settle less than t transit. 
the same thing as saying h over this expression, d squared g density of the particle minus density of the fluid divided by 18 times the viscosity, dynamic viscosity of the fluid. All that has to be less than L divided by U. The capital U here is the speed from left to right in the flow. And so if we want to find the aspect ratio of that channel to make sure that we don't get, um, that, that to make sure that all the particles settle, then what we'll do is rewrite L over H. And I'll just bring this H over to the one side with the L. So that L over H needs to be greater than 18 times the dynamic viscosity of the fluid times the horizontal velocity of the fluid in the channel divided by the particle size, particle diameter squared times G times rho P minus rho F. And let me just double check, I've got all that correct. Yeah, so that should all be correct. So this is the condition we need to make sure we have for this channel. Just resketch it here. So here's our L, here's our H, and here's the velocity coming in. And as long as that L over H exceeds that value that we just boxed in, any particles in here should settle out before they make it through the channel. And these kind of gravity settling tanks are used pretty frequently. You'll see them often in um, waste disposal sites, so like a sewage treatment plant or something like that, to try to get the solids settled out of a liquid. So they're not uncommon to find. Okay, we'll go ahead and... Oh, oh I think we had one quick extra question here. Uh, how will the length L change if the particle diameter is doubled? So if you come down here and you look at this, if we double the particle diameter here, it shows that um, th that'll since the diameter is getting squared, it, uh, it means that we'll have an extra fac uh, factor of four. So if the particle diameter doubles, then the length of the channel will go down by a factor of four. So um, we'll just write that down. The length L decreases by a factor of four if particle diameter doubles. All right.